Welcome to Electron Online, and here is our video on uh, Kepler's second law. And Kepler's second law was a very interesting law. He discovered that if you, for example, tie an imaginary string from the sun to the earth as the earth is traveling through its orbit, and then of course that string would then over time sweep out a certain amount of area of space, he claimed that that area of space that's being swept out per unit time, per given time, would never change. Which is kind of an interesting idea because when the Earth is closed, you can see that then the area would be relatively small, and when the Earth was far away, you would expect the area to be bigger. But he claimed that that was not the case. And the reason was that he had discovered that when the Earth is close to the Sun, the Earth travels faster, and when the Earth is far away from the Sun, it travels slower, in such a way that the areas swept out are equal. So he did that through observation. But we can now show with physics that that makes a lot of sense. For example, um, the angular momentum of an object should never change, which would therefore predicate that when the object is closed, it would have to travel faster. When the object is far away, it would have to travel slower because the, the angular momentum, L, is R cross B, which can be written as R cross MV, which can be written as M times R cross V. So, with other words, that if R becomes bigger, V has to become smaller, and if R becomes smaller, V has to be bigger, so that L always stays constant. Well, we're going to show you in just a moment why we know that the angular momentum stays constant. Another way to look at it is simply through mechanics. We know that when the Earth is closer to the Sun, it has less potential energy, therefore more uh, kinetic energy. More kinetic energy means that it's going to travel faster. And when the Earth is far away from the Sun, it has uh, more potential energy, therefore less kinetic energy. Less kinetic energy means the Earth is traveling slower. So everything should indicate that what Kepler discovered through observation should indeed be so. Well, let's first figure out the angular momentum staying constant. We can say that the torque on any object is simply equal to the change of the angular momentum per unit time. And so if this is going to be zero, question mark, then of course the torque has to be zero as well. So what makes up the torque on the Earth? Well, there's a force that acts on the Earth, and that force is, is directed directly towards the Sun, so that's the force due to gravity. And then if we multiply that force times the position vector, you can see that since they are pointed in opposite directions, because the position vector is pointing outward and the force is pointing inward, so you see that the angle between them is either 0 or 180, depending on how you want to look at it. And you also know that <clears throat> r cross f, the magnitude of r cross f is equal to r times f times the sine of the angle between them. And of course, if the angle between them is either 0 or 180, which in this case it's 180, that has to be 0. So this is equal to r times f times the sine of 180 degrees, which is equal to 0, which shows that the torque is equal to 0 which means that the LDT has to be equal to zero. So we just showed you that the angular momentum of the Earth in the orbit around the Sun, that angular momentum is a constant, doesn't change. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this area right here, because in a certain amount of DT, this area is being swept out, so let's call this a DA. And then if we say that that much area is swept out per unit time, we can call it DA DT. So this much area is swept out in so much time, called DT. So if we now write the velocity as velocity is the change in the position vector with respect to time, then we can say that uh, this right here, this length of this vector is dr dt, and this length here is r. So we can go ahead and say that this is equal to the area being swept out is equal to one half the length times the width, or the length times the base, because this is kind of like a triangle. So this is equal to the uh, absolute value of r cross dr dt. The dtt, of course, is constant, right? So the question here is, is this equal to a constant? Does that not change? All right, so if the air is swept out in a certain amount of time is equal to this, and realize then that the RTT is equal to V, I can replace this quantity here by V. So I can say that the amount of area swept out per unit time is equal to one half times the value of R cross V. Now I've seen this before somewhere on the other side of the board. So if I can go over here and say R cross V times M is equal to the angular momentum, 
And so I can say that r cross v is equal to angle momentum divided by m. So this can now be written as 1 half times r cross v, which is the angle momentum divided by m. And of course, since we now know that this is a constant, since this is a constant, and the mass of the Earth is a constant, we have then shown that therefore this must also be a constant. And so interesting enough, Kepler, who uh, discovered this through observation, has now proven to be correct using this mathematics and this physics. Knowing that the angle of momentum doesn't change, that the total energy doesn't change, so if kinetic energy, if potential energy increases, kinetic energy decreases, if potential energy uh, decreases, kinetic energy increases, and so we can see that then, therefore, that must mean that the area is being swept out is indeed always a constant per unit time. Pretty clever.